What's up guys? Today I want to talk a little bit about getting started with Redstone. I feel like Redstone has a kind of high barrier of entry, uh, especially if you've never used it before. So I aim to explain a little bit about what it does, how it works, and really just explaining the things that you need to know for about 90% of the things you'll make with it, uh, without diluting it with things that are only required if you're doing something crazy. All right, so the first thing is Redstone Dust. Um, redstone dust you can just mine in the ground. Um, it requires an iron pickaxe. It kind of goes, it's like kind of lower in the ground. Um, you can place it on the ground. Um, and you'll notice that if you place it down, it'll be in like all four directions. You can right click it and it will get rid of those directions. Um, and this is important because when you are making the signals, the redstone will only carry the signal into the block that it's facing into. Um, and what I mean by signals is like if I power it using a redstone torch, for example, or a lever might be better. Um, if I use a lever and then I turn it on, it will make an on signal. It'll only power blocks that are it's facing into. Um, so I put a redstone lamp here. A redstone lamp turns on when the signal's on and turns off if the signal's off. Um, if I put a redstone lamp here, it does not get powered because there's nothing facing into it. Um, there is a caveat here, though, is that redstone also powers the block that it's on top of. So if I put a block here, um, the redstone lamp here gets powered. The redstone lamp here will not get powered. But if I put it next to this block, it will get powered. Um, so basically, it's whatever the redstone's facing into or next to a block that the redstone is on top of um, will will turn on. Um, you can just experiment with that. If it doesn't turn on, just try moving it around and it'll, it'll probably work. Um, okay. So redstone uh, is the cheapest way to get a redstone signal from point A to point B. Um, there's a variety of ways to get the signal to be on. Um, redstone torch is one way, and that just kind of gives you a static signal. Um, redstone torches also offer the property of inverting the signal, which I will explain later. Um, but essentially, a lever will do that, and it will stay on indefinitely, and then it right -click, you right-click it to turn it off or on. Um, a button will turn on the, the redstone for a short period of time before turning off. Um, a wood button lasts longer, uh, but it does the same thing. Um, a pressure plate it will only turn on if something is standing on top of it. Um, the different variety of pressure plates will do different things. Um, I think, for example, the iron one only reacts to weight on, on it. So I've got, like, items. Um... You know, the signal's really weak, but if I put more items, it'll, like, get stronger. Um, I think it requires a lot of items, though. Um, so essentially, make sure that it's going to do what you want to do. Um, stone and wood are usually the most reliable. Um, the iron and gold ones do weird things. Um, I have a video on that if you want to see it. Um, or you can just experiment uh, with what they do. Okay. So now, um, if we put a redstone signal um, on this redstone here... If we take it really, really, really far away from the source, we can see that it gets dimmer across the length of the redstone until it eventually turns off. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because you have to make sure that you're not too far away or else it, the signal will turn off and it won't work. Um, if, I, if I put a redstone lamp here, it won't turn on regardless of if the lever is on or off. Um, so you want to be careful with that. There are a number of ways to deal with this. One is that you just make your line shorter, of course. If I put the, the lamp here, it'll work. Um, if that's not possible, then what you do is you can use a repeater. Um, a redstone repeater um, essentially will repeat the signal um, to the max signal strength. Um, so the max signal strength is next to the thing that you're powering it with. Um, so it's really dim here, and then it's really bright here. Um, so essentially what it does is it just lets you repeat the signal and then you can take it even further away. This one will again um, run out of length. This one turns off, so you have to use another repeater. Uh, but that essentially lets you extend it indefinitely. Now, repeaters also have d another property where if you right-click it, you can change the delay of the repeaters. Um, so on the default delay, which is the shortest delay, we can see that the signals basically turn off and on together. Um, the left one is ever so slightly later. Um, if we right-click it all the way uh, to the left here, then the delay will be very long. Um, and now it's really noticeable, right? Um, the other ones in between just do different values. Um, so this one will be a little bit faster. And you can, of course, chain these together. Um, so if I want even longer delay than this, I can add a bunch of these 
together and get a very long delay. Um, these also have a weird mechanism where if you put a, like a repeater to the side of one, it'll do weird things when you turn it on. Um, what it does is if, if this repeater is on, um, it will lock the position of whatever this is. So if I actually like, if I power this repeater and I turn this one off, it'll lock this repeater in the on position to keep giving me a signal. And then if I get rid of this, it'll turn off. Um, I think this also works if it's off and I turn this one on, it won't turn on. Um, the main reason I brought this up is that be careful with this. Um, this does something different than if you're doing this. Um, right. Those two, those do different things. So you just want to be careful with that. I um, mean, if you see this like bar, just know it's not going to do um, the behavior that I explained here. It'll do the locking behavior. Uh, so be aware of that. All right. So the next thing um, and a very useful thing is how redstone torches operate when you put them on blocks that there's redstone on. Um, whoops, I need to get a little bit closer. So if I put a redstone torch on this block, um, this block is being powered by the redstone. Um, the redstone's facing this way, but it's also powering this block here. Uh, the torch will turn off, you'll see. Um, this redstone's on, and then this one will turn off, so then this won't like have any signal at all. Um, if I turn this off, the torch will turn back on, and then this will get powered. Um, so uh, torches essentially just invert the signal. So if this is off, this one will be on. If this one is on, this one will be off. Um, essentially, it's whatever block the, tor the torch is on, right? So if I do this, it'll also turn off. Um, however, in order to grab the signal from the torch, you have to either put it um, right next to it. Um, so if I do this has to be right next to the torch, or it has to be um, in a block that is facing um, the tip of the torch. So this one will also get powered. Um, I don't believe the ones to the side will get powered, though. Um, and the ones down here will also not get powered. Um, this can just be found through experimentation. You can just make sure that it's oriented correctly and that it'll grab the signal before you start uh, messing with it. Um, so this inversion is really useful, especially if you need, like, inverted... Um, things. A very basic example that doesn't really matter, but it kind of gets my point across, um, is let's say you have a lever in your OCD like I am, um, and we're going to make a piston door. So let's say we put a pistons here, um, and pistons, uh, if you've never used them before, they push and, and if it's a sticky piston, pull blocks. Um, these ones are sticky pistons. So they will push and pull the blocks. Normal pistons only push the blocks. And you can power them just like normal. If you have two pistons right here, you can power them in this uh, configuration where this redstone powers this top one, and then this block gets powered by the redstone, which then powers this bottom one. Um, so if I have a lever, I can grab them, and I can pull them out like this, right? So let's say I have a door. Um, and I'm OCD, so I want the door to be open when I turn the lever on, right? So if the lever's off, I want the door to be closed. And if the lever's on, I want the door to be open. So we can see right now that it's not doing that. If it's on, the door's closed, and that's the opposite of what I want. Um, you can use a torch to invert the signal. Um, so I put the torch here. Uh, this redstone's not facing into this block, so it's not going to power the torch. So we can fix that by putting it on top. And now you can see that it is doing what I want, where the... The lever is off and the door is closed and the lever is on and the door is open. Um, in this example, you could just like have the lever be in the opposite configuration and it would work the same way. Uh, but there are situations where you kind of need this inversion to happen um, in order to do what you want to do. All right, next I want to just explain some of the redstone objects that you might find useful. Um, so as we've already seen, the redstone lamp uh, will um, be a light source that you could turn off and on. Um, this is useful if you have a daylight sensor or something, um, which you can make. And essentially, it outputs a signal when it's daylight, um, and you don't have a signal when it's nighttime, and I have it on uh, day only. So this will turn off. Um, this is actually a better example than the one I gave for a torch. You know, if it's nighttime, I want the lights to be on, right? And that's obviously not the case here. Um, if I put a torch here, though... 
Um, now it'll be on at nighttime, and then if I go back to um, daytime, it'll turn off. Um, so that's a really useful way to have the, the redstone torches be useful. Um, the daylight sensor is uh, what I just showed you. It outputs a signal that is based on if it's day or night. Um, the signal strength will change at like dusk and dawn, so be aware of that. Um, the how far away you go from it will depend on when it switches uh, in dusk and dawn. Um, now, iron doors are useful because you can't open them by right-clicking them. Um, it just like won't let you. That was a bad example. It just like won't let you. Um, you can open them by powering them with redstone. Um, so that's useful if you want to have like a combination lock and you don't want to make like a piston door because that's complicated. Um, pistons allow you to push and pull blocks. So a normal piston uh, without the like green stuff on the front will push blocks and then it will leave them there when they retract. Um, a sticky piston will pull the blocks back when you grab them. Um, something I just want to mention is that if the signal goes really fast, like if I do that, it'll actually leave the block. Um, and this is a Java edition thing. Um, so if you're going really fast and like your sticky piston keeps leaving the block kind of weirdly, um, it's probably because your signal's turning off and on too fast. Um, something that's also useful is observers. So observers will have... Um, the like back with the redstone and then the front with the face they output a redstone signal when uh, the like block in front of them changes um, there's a whole bunch of rules for how, like what constitutes a block change and stuff the biggest one is like if you place a block or something um, it'll power the thing in the back really quickly um, this is actually a good example of when this is a problem sometimes you have observers and pistons and it, the observer goes too fast where the sticky piston will leave the block there um this can be to your advantage of course um i'm not saying this is a bad thing it's just something you want to be aware of and this is a 100 percent of java edition thing um observers i like to use redstone repeaters with because the signal goes so fast that it's hard to do much unless you're making like flying machines or something so sometimes i'll kind of like mediate it with a repeater to make it last longer um, and you can also invert it and do other things, of course, with that. Now, another block that's useful is power rails. Um, so if you like making railway systems and want to make like a, a roller coaster or like have faster ways to get around the map, um, power rails let you power your minecart so you can go really fast. Um, it's especially good up hills. Um, you can go up hills with power rails. Um, you can't turn with them, which is kind of annoying. Um, you can just use a normal rail um, to make corners like this. Uh, you can't do it with power rails, though. And power rails, they just power like any other component. You put a redstone signal next to them. Um, if you have a corner, this one won't get powered because it's not connected. Um, power rails do have a maximum amount of rails that will get powered. Um, yeah, you can see it turns off. So it's kind of like redstone dust. Um, only a, a certain number of them will get powered until you have to refresh the, the thing by powering it again. Um, and these can get powered any old way. Um, torches work fine. Lovers work fine. You can power, um, I think you can power the blocks, like, next to them. So if I want to, like, hide it a little bit, I can put redstone dust into, it's a lot of the say, into this block. Um, sorry, not that, that block. Into the block that's on, right? Um, so then it's powering the redstone, the, uh, the rails, but then I can, like, hide it a little bit better. You can also put torches under it if that is better suited to your uh building style and you know there's a lot of different ways you can turn them off too and that makes it where the minecart will stop so you can make it like a, a train stop um that way so those are very useful and they require getting powered by redstone all right guys that'll be it for this video um i hope that this makes redstone as a whole a little less intimidating um and helps you get started with using it and making things that um, you want to make. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time.